All right, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Posted. Number three, reading notice agenda for March 11th. We have a 17 point agenda. Motion to approve. Motion by Cargrove, second by Frank. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Okay. Opposed? All right, we have an agenda. Item four, approve minutes of the February 11th meeting. Motion by Severson. Oh, you wasn't there. Oh, sorry. Motion by Frank, second by Cosgrove. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? The minutes approved. All right, item number five, corner updates. I see there was an update in our folder. I want to just summarize that to yeah. quarter. Um, February nine deaths in February, uh, four COVID related, two cardiac. Answer one suicide, one still pending toxicology. I'm still looking for additional staff, one to two additional staff. It's interested. Staff seven. Again. Just out of curiosity, what qualifications does a person have to have to? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Know. I mean, I suppose as a coroner, there's not. The, it's not like it's a medical. No, I think position. they it's they a, they have like a schooling and stuff they can go. To. Interesting. Essentially, you're just on call. Is yeah. that what happens? Yeah. Interesting. Chair. Yes. Paul, do you want to speak to that? Oh, what qualifications it takes to be a coroner? The training. The deputy coroner did send me to Door County for three days for the training. Specifically, there is no training required. Full degree. Okay, interesting. Thank you. All right. That brings us to item number six clerk of court updates. Good morning. Yes, and it's also, you know. Well, when you send it via email, it's redundant. I mean, if you just send it to us, they'll get it on their iPad. Works, we got it. I don't have any questions. I mean, it looks like things are moving along like you usually do, and that uh, you guys are. Seemingly very prepared for the um, transition of the judge. We're trying, attempting to be as prepared as you can possibly be. Uh, we're um, we're getting there. Some of the things this week, we're um, I will run like different list cases and different types of statuses. So my notice that there's cases that are decades old that are open, but they're um, well. Of course, some of them are warrant status. Some of them are in diversion status, EPA status, which means time of their um, sentencing, the judge, instead of ordering probation or ordering a fine or jail or prison, whatever, agreed with the district attorney's representation request for a diversion agreement, kind of like being monitored by the district attorney and having certain conditions that you have to follow similar to probation, but not formally on probation. And then if somebody successfully completes that, then there would be like a proposed order from the prosecutor, or the judge to mark that case as agreement fulfilled and the charge to be dismissed. 
So sometimes maybe over the years um, or along the line, there have just been times when that, like the people were probably notified that they successfully completed it, but that final order wasn't done. So we have cases unnecessarily open. And I don't want anything going to a new judge that doesn't have to have a hearing date. So that when we actually generate a list of however many hundred cases, everything on there really needs to have something, not just a paper review. So that kind of like cleanup. So that's work that I'm generating lists for the DA and saying, could you please check into this? This case is old. You know, there was never any report that the person didn't successfully do it. Because if they didn't successfully do it, then they come before the court and they get sentenced for one of those things, like jail or prison. So any cleanup, so just clean up stuff. And like um, the DA, a lot of their cases from those eras I'm looking at, they're not readily accessible in the office. They've got to do some digging. They've got to go to the attic, whatever. We've got the physical files, and we've converted it electronic. So we've got it all, but we don't have their paper. It's just, just stuff like that. Um, yeah, verifying warrants, verifying that cases really belong in open status. And um, thinking about things on our end that we want to work with a new judge on right away. Question that the child support agency had for me just today is um, how do we appoint mediators, like family mediators? Well, that's actually people who go and become certified to be a family mediator. And then that's approved by the judge. Maybe the new judge is going to want to do it different. Maybe they're maybe they got some ideas for bringing more people in, or whatnot. And then the judge and the court commissioner sit down, evaluate basically how the family mediators are doing, and whether they're going to whether they're going to continue having them. The clerk's only role in it is assigning a mediator to a family case when there's a need for that because there's certain motions filed and whatever. And then we just kind of alternate. So my answer to them was, well, we kind of got to wait for a new judge because Judge Sharp's only got a couple weeks left. And, you know, if you've got questions about how that process works or you think something needs to be done different, I guess that's a take it up with the new judge sort of thing. So we've got just a list of stuff that, you know, we're anxious to work with somebody on how do they want to do it. And uh, first, you know, this is how we do it now. And then... Um, Elections the other day. That's just a, that's not a preparing for the judge, but that's at the same time that over thirty five thousand dollars of SDC stuff, without like without taking a break, without doing like anything, only that for took me like three and a half hours, just to generate the receipts to reconcile because they're coming electronically and whatnot. Is two hundred ninety four receipts. So. Sometimes during the month, we might have 800 receipts coming through our office. So it's like, and then the fear is always getting to the end of the receipts, looking at the figures that they might not match where they should. And then finding where I transposed a number in one of those 294 receipts or whatnot, but this one, it came, I was having that fear all the way through. Maybe it was more cautious and it was fine. But so each month we have that. So in April, again, at the end month, we'll have that and that. So we're doing our normal stuff and we're preparing. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, well, thank you. Always very thorough. Great. Uh, item number seven register improvement. Good morning, everyone. Um, so just to kind of add on to Stacy, um, so we have begun the transition. We have hired Amber Kelly as the new court reporter. So um, as it, in the last meeting, Sue Kataravik did retire on February 18th. Um, the judge has hired Amber Kelly. She's already begun work, and she's on board and learning everything very quickly and very eager um, to take on this new role. So we're excited to... I didn't show, but does she do sten stenography or does she do digital, just uses the digital system to? At this time, she is a DAR court reporter. 
uh, she is continuing to, she has gone through the schooling and she is continuing to increase her speed, but to become a sten stenographer, you have to be at a certain speed and pass the test. So she's continuing to work on that. Interesting. Okay. Practice on an official transfer. She could listen to the radio and, and do it on her own time, but she can't. Yeah. Perfect. All right. And then just to continue on, so as you all know, uh, Judge Sharp will be retiring effective April 1st at 4.30. Is he having a retirement party? He is. So I will have some information to hand out to each of you individually. Um, here, yeah. and um, so yes, he will be having a party for colleagues and and um, horses invited, and and then uh, we we too. I think with having a new judge, it does uh, take pause to look at the cases that have been lingering, um, the processes between. Departments, I guess. So one of the things that I have noticed in the last few weeks in preparing for the new judge is that, um, you know, the whole thing with electronic filing and Zoom, um, but the processes between departments, especially between my office and the Department of Health and Human Services, and a little bit between law enforcement and how some of these with the district attorney's office um, may change a little bit depending on how this um, plays out. But I think changes are good in some ways because it does make you examine um, not only cases but processes a little bit more than when you're just trying to, you know, keep going all of the time. So I do feel like that is something that we are taking a much closer look at um, to become more efficient. And and I think that's you know we will probably be using attorney window a little bit more. Um, I guess I'm anticipating that. So just so that you're also aware of that, especially that is especially too in the adult guardianship cases. Uh, so just some of the changes that may be, um, we also may be looking more at having uh, non-party filers, such as the social workers, electronically filing documents and reviewing some of that. That's been done more manually in the past. That's either been manually entered by myself or Denise in the district attorney's office. So we're looking at some different processes as well in this preparation. Um, and then just really quick on the budget side, um, as of yesterday, I ended up for 2021 at 96% of the budget. I think there's just maybe, you know, a very few things still trickling in, but not too much, but um, should be under budget. Yeah, so I think should all end up under budget so that's that's good yeah, that was nice it was very close yeah. um but hey yeah. that's okay though you know <laughs> it means you did a good job of guessing at how many of your attorney fees would would be for expenditure. right yeah so the line items <laughs> don't always are but the overall picture it was very close good all right does anyone have any questions all right well thank you right so that brings us to district attorney, and I don't see her online in the room. So no news is hopefully good news and all is well. Um, item number nine, approve monthly invoices and other sheriff's department reports. You wanna start with the bill? Sure. Okay. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary in the bills that I can see. Does anybody have any questions about them? Yeah, I didn't see anything unusual in there either. Does anyone else? There's a couple of these, we have to get them approved. So the, um, the, the work that was done when uh, up at CAS, is that under contract or was that separate? Do we know? So uh, that was, that was part of a uh, contract, maintenance contract, but some of that may be build maintenance or, or uh, parts of that maybe. equipment and stuff like that may be built. So okay. we do we have a budget category for radio yes. stuff. 
just when that comes up. Other for in addition to the contract from us. Yes. Okay. All right. If there's no questions on the bill, do you, were you going to say something? Oh. You made a motion. Oh. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Have a second. All right. Second by Frank. Any other discussion on the bill? What's impound maintenance? I don't know which one you took. They're in an order. <laughs> They're in an order so I can monitor the hearing. We have a small propane heater out there and it was, we filled an LP tank. Any other questions? Um, all right. If there's no questions on the bill. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? All right. The bills are approved. So that brings us to your report. Uh, jail bookings are staying steady at around 50 for the month of February. Uh, average inmates housed is up slightly to 26. 182 monthly complaints, uh, 50 traffic citations issued, uh, 17 papers served, civil process papers served, and nine transports for the month. Average number out on electronic monitoring is three. I do anticipate that to go up just a little bit in the next couple months. Dispatching activity, 345 calls for service, 66 calls for EMS, and 67 calls for the police department. Right. So we used to get a, a jail summary. Um, we haven't like in the last year, I don't think, but I think that's something we could get like once a year or something. Or do you remember what I'm talking about, Amber? It used to always come with it was the, the next page of this that talked about the general summary of the yeah. I don't think it needs to be monthly, but maybe like twice a year or something. Might I'll not be a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to our old LEJC, well, we didn't have packets on here. <laughs> well, you must have notes somewhere of, of what you handed out. Cause, yeah. Yeah, just, and it, I don't, it doesn't have to be monthly. I don't want to put more work, but I, but I did find it helpful every once in a while because we, we would notice some interesting things that we could just talk about. So yep. if it's not a big deal. No, we can do that. Um, maybe twice a year. Did you have something, Supervisor Frank? No, I'm. Oh, okay. I just thought you were. Like, no, I'm thinking, thinking here. And, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, is that it from your report, then? For that, yes. Yep. So that would bring us to item number ten, nine one one outlay invoice approval, the central square, the one I thought we needed to see. Yes. Seven thousand. So uh, we have a a bill from or an invoice from Central Square. Uh, $7,455. This is for maintenance and licensing for our 911 system, for our 911 software. And we budgeted for it. It's in the budget. Yes. Anyone have any questions? Is that annual? Yes. Okay. Barb, this is an annual fee, right? All right. I would entertain a motion to send this on to finance, right? Is that what we're doing? Or does this go straight to board? It goes straight to board. Straight, straight to board. board. Yep. Here you see this on moves. Great. Second by Frank. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? All right. That is approved. Item number 11, approval to advertise for inmate meal contract. So our current meal contract is up in January 3rd of 23. So okay. we'll need to just kind of get the ball rolling early on getting something else in place for do we assume that it will be the same people or are they saying they don't want to do it uh could be the same people um i know there's some other vendors is it grant county it's it's uh summit right but is it, it but it, yeah it's, grant it comes county. out of grant county's kitchen okay. yes how is that working um it 
it works well when they can deliver. I'll you have to that. pick it up if they can't deliver? No, if they don't deliver. Then you uh, go to Quick Trip? We go to Quick Trip. Okay. So that's so not been, like, <laughs> yeah, they, they really enjoy it. It's not been as much of an issue this winter as it has been in past. So it's mostly weather related when it's they can't It's usually weather related. Um, we did have one in an instance where they were short staffed, but we haven't had it. We haven't had it because of staffing for a while. But probably was COVID related or something. Yeah. Everybody's having staffing yeah. issues. Oh, that's Even the food yeah. service. Yeah. Probably especially the food service. Yeah. So, so from from your perspective, it works. It works. It works. Um, I would be open to exploring other options, but if no other options present, it does work. But you think there may be because last time they were pretty much it for options. Yeah, I know uh Aramark uh provides for Vernon County. And okay. I wouldn't be opposed to reaching out to some of the local kitchens again, seeing and, if anybody yeah, would. Because Iowa County is going to be, aren't they going to be making their own? They food? will be, yep. Yeah. They, so they, they have not them. started. Yeah. Uh, they're still getting food from Lafayette, I believe, but soon they'll be opening their kitchen. and Could potentially be yeah. another option as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Would someone like to make a motion to give them the approval to advertise? Second. And thank you for getting it going early. So we weren't the last time we were kind of in a, a pickle. Yeah, there, so. you're welcome. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Please advertise. All right. Item number 12, approval of resolution for squad costs. So this is the borrowing money you want. This is the borrowing money. Spend. Yes. Uh, did anybody have a chance to look or did everybody have a chance to look over the resolution, resolution. I had drafted? Oh, I, I opened it. Did you try it again? Or is it just not opening here? I read it earlier. Mine's opening. Maybe you need to update your system or something. I mean, it's a pretty standard. It's pretty much the same language we used for the 2021 borrowing, where we just said we yes. can spend up to or no more than what we borrowed. Than what we borrowed. Yep. And we're pretty sure we can get two cars completely outfitted for that amount of money. Um. I had a little bit of money left over from last year's borrowed funds. <laughs> well, and that was for squads, right? Yep, it was for squads. So we borrowed a little bit more, didn't we? We borrowed a little bit less. It was less? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think we'll be okay, pretty sure. Okay. Because yep. we don't really have any other little pot of money to be able to buy equipment out of. No. If we don't. No. Um, we have we have some money in new equipment, but that's not what that was really intended for. Right. So. Okay, because what would we do if you order these and then we can't outfit them? We don't have money somewhere. I'll probably have to get another resolution for taking money from elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. So, like from the, I mean, would we need a resolution to take it from the borrowed funds from last year, or is that money still sort of allocated? Um, from talking with Clint, that money was was still available. So, yeah. Okay. So we should be covered. I think we're fairly covered. confident. We I'm fairly covered. confident we're covered. Okay. All right. <laughs> Can you guys see the resolution? I mean, essentially what I it says is it. that they can spend, uh, spend, it's authorizing them to spend no more than $127,000. How many vehicles would that allow for? Two. And I don't know if you heard our conversation going, but I was asking him how confident he is that he can actually get two cars on the road for that amount of money. And the other option. Pretty confident. If, if we have to reuse equipment, we'll, we'll reuse some equipment. I'm retiring but. whatever. Yeah. Are going to what what we can reuse. Yep. Because looking at your mileage, which I do really appreciate. I don't know if this is a lot of busy work, but it is, I do really appreciate being able to see this every month. Um, two of these vehicles are going to get replaced. Do we have the two new ones from 2021 on the road yet? So yeah, the two from 2021 are Squad 15 and Squad 9. Oh, now I see the years. Okay. And so they're out on the road now. They haven't been lettered yet. Uh, hopefully we'll have that done soon. But they are out and they're in service. And then, um, so we put, one of those was an insurance replacement. So that car is just gone now. Um, we do have a couple. I have a couple in impound that I need to liquidate. And then we have, we'll have two spares again for uh, our ears or whatever may require us to need an extra car. So I'm assuming you're going to replace like deputy 
Sutton and Deputy Ring vehicles with the new one? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So actually, I'd like to ask um, now that you've had a year of every deputy having their own vehicle for the most part, do you feel that we're putting less miles on? The vehicles are better taken care of because they have their own. All of the things that we said would happen. Do you feel like that's actually? Yeah. Happening? You know, I, I don't think as far as like maintenance, I think it's still a little early to tell that, but I think that's going to come with them not getting the miles. I mean, for a while there, we were running cars that were, you know, if they, if they ran, it wasn't uncommon for a car to run 16 hours a day, not run, run, but to be in use 16 right. hours in a 24 hour period. And so you just, you really, so now they're you, down you to stack eight hours. the hours and you stack up the miles on it. Well, actually, it would be eight hours on only the people that are working that day. Yeah. The other vehicles then are not running at all on yeah. that day. So I think our mileage should start to slow down. Mileage is slowed down on that. That's for sure. And I think you know, give us another year or two to to see the trends. And I think maintenance will slow down as well. Right. So I think we need to vote on the resolution. I don't think I called for a vote on that, right? I need a motion, I think. I'll move. Tracy or something. Matasco. Any further discussion on the giving them approval to send the borrowed funds? And if, if this was mentioned, um, it's in the borrowed funds, it's it, it's part of the planning project. Yeah. All right, thank you. And I'm fully outfitted with all the money, so that's always good. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Kevin. That to the county board. Um, oh, come on. Right, what's next on the agenda? I can't see my agenda at the moment. Approval to hire. So, Officer Tyler Barr from the police department has submitted an application for care. He's been there now, but I see he's probably seven or eight years at this point. Track record of eventful work. And so he's interested in working part time patrol. Um, probably could be swayed into doing a little court if we needed help with court or anything. Um, right now we have Christian, and then we'll probably help backfill with office staff when we need to. And then we don't. Right now we don't. Uh, the other guy that I had lined up for court still out with injury, not work related, not our work related injury. So I'm going to find some more court security. My hope is with with. Some of the casuals we have that they'll be able to jump in when Christian wants a day off. Anyone have any questions? Move to accept. Uh... Right, he is on too. If anyone has any questions, I see he's on. Bye bye. Hello, Mr. Barr. Um, do we have a second? Second. A second by Frank. Any further discussion? So is this actually uh, your approval to hire a casual employee, whether it's Tyler or not, you're just looking for approval to hire the employee and then you will fill with that, that with whoever. In this case, it appears to be Tyler, correct? Tyler, yeah. It will be. Okay, yeah. thank you. We have kind of given you, we had previously given permission to hire up to six or something. The latest document had eight. Eight, vegetables. okay. Yeah. And so, I mean, so essentially you already have permission, but you're just confirming that we have permission to hire this individual. Okay. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. So I did send all of you, um, we've been working on the 
FAQ document that we can pre uh, present to both supervisors and the public to help understand why we need to uh, replace this radio tower. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any questions. I realize I just sent that to you a few minutes ago. So I don't mean if you want to, if you guys have any, if you read it through it and have any questions or concerns or want anything else uh, maybe explained in more detail, or if there's other questions that you've heard that you think we should address, please let me know so that we can include it in the document. Um, I don't know if you guys want to talk on, we did meet with Clint and Carol Worth and Mike Day about how we want to go through the borrowing process. I don't know if one of you wants to summarize that. I, mean, it, I would, but I don't. That, I think the, that meeting kind of less about borrowing, more about planning, so. Well, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, with the borrowing in the back of our minds, yeah. the entire conversation, like how are we going to get the borrowed funds approved? One thing that struck me out of that meeting was the timing. And after talking to Mike yesterday about a few things, our time schedule is, is so tight. Um, the bids are due back yesterday, and we did receive bids from two vendors. I will not pretend that I know anything about them because I don't, other than I know we received two bids. That's, that's the extent of my knowledge. It's the two that we expected, correct? Um, we have gotten numbers back on the higher ground upgrade. We have not gotten numbers back on the upgrade for the jail into door integration piece that we have to include in this project, even though it will be right. Not it's not radio, but it's affected. Yeah, by the it's radio. affected by the radio console. We that's haven't gotten. That we have that fifty thousand for. Yep, that's that'll go towards it. Um, but the timeline on this is so tight. We will be coming back to you. Um, we have a special LEJC, is my understanding, on the 21st. Correct. That's to Mike to present us with the results of the RFP. Yes. And after you get that, you get to digest that. Um, then we will have the regular LEJC on the 8th. Um, did April 8th. Correct. We have not, Melissa, was it you that? Somebody point Carol Worth pointed out that the 15th, which is the normal second finance, is actually Good Friday. So we have to figure out when they're moving that because it won't be the 15th, obviously. We have to hit that meeting. That meeting really, really, really needs to happen yes. because we need to hit county board in April with this resolution to borrow. It's just the initial resolution where we approve that we're going to borrow. It's not the actual borrowing. So and then it gets really complicated after that. Yeah, that's your first timelines, but all of those. So the 21st at 4 p.m. is our first meeting, then the 8th. Then we have to figure out when they're doing that. And Clinton, I see you're on. Have you given any thought to when we're moving that finance meeting to? I'm hoping to have it the third Thursday. Um, right prior to that Good Friday meeting. So it'll be on Monday, Thursday, which still might have some interference for folks. Okay. But it's not an official holiday, Monday, Thursday, correct? Correct. How do our staff go get Our started? staff honors it. We get that day off. And so we'll have that and then county board the Tuesday after. So we're on a tight timeline for that initial borrowing resolution then then it actually slows down and um i think we'll explain in more detail later but we probably won't actually go and borrow the money until potentially until september mm -hmm. but we do need to get the initial because we will have to come up with a down payment and things like that so um i did get a letter uh, did you get Mike? Did Mike, Mike respond to the letter from Chief Knable? Yeah, I didn't see a response. I response. So I'm just going to read the, the paragraph that I just want to make sure because I do want to make sure this is addressed. So he, it's it's longer. I'm just going to read the one relevant paragraph that I think has the most relevance. I have looked through the RFP that is posted on the Richland County webpage. I question whether or not all of the radio systems issued are being issues are being addressed. 
Is the frequency named IFERN a part of this project? I have not seen it specifically involved in the RFP. I also do not see mention of the frequency Mark 1 involved in the RFP. I am hopeful these two frequencies will be addressed within the project if they are not, especially the IFERN frequency. The project would not satisfy all the needs of Richland County emergency responders. So, of course, I don't know. I've heard mention of the IFERN because I saw it in our FAQ documents or something that failed or something we had problems with. <laughs> um, so I just want to make you aware that we did get official communication and I believe you mentioned that you've gotten or are getting letters from other. We got one this morning. Um, I assume those letters are just saying how desperately we need the system, not specifically talking about our RFP or. Yeah, they've been just speaking to the need for the system. So okay, which is good because I think that we may want to include any letters we get from our users of this system. I think it would be really good to um, include that information with the FAQ document just so that they can hear from fire departments and the ambulance. Yes, Supervisor Severson. I suggested um, that such a thing happen at the Richland Center Fire Department, and they said absolutely not. Will they walk publicly and ask for support system? They, they feel that this is actually a Richland County issue. To we are doing it, but we I would just. There will be other helpers. Yeah. Seems contradictory to me. They use our system, right? Whatever. Whatever information we get, let's include it with the FAQ document so that the public and our supervisors can understand the need, why we need this, why, why we're asking them to spend the money now, not five years from now, or two years from now, or even one year from now. So, um, Maybe we need to do, maybe we do need to put one little note in here saying that even if we, when we approve this money, let's be positive, when we approve this money, it's still going to be a 18 months before we have a working system. So we somehow have to cobble this system together and keep it working for 18 months. Maybe that is something that I'll add or someone can add to the FAQ just as a, another more information. Um, one other thing that I wanted to quickly talk about was the subscriber equipment. Um, two things I want to talk about. There, so I did talk to Darren Gudgeon. There is a possibility of potentially maybe being some grant funds. I don't know if Supervisor Frank, if you know of any other, and I can't remember what grant. Does anyone know the grants he's talking about? FAP grant, and there are two subsections of that grant. The one is for local, there is a regional one. Um, but as I just stated, I know the, the odds of getting them. It's low and we, my belief is that it cannot be used to replace things that are already purchased. Right, but we did talk about that the timing of buying subscriber equipment would be towards the end of this whole project. So that does give us a little more time to explore grants. It does. You can't reimburse for things you've already bought. Right. So do we, my question to the committee would be, are we going to include that money in the can borrow up to and not borrow it? Right. So what I was thinking we would do is we would at this point borrow. I was going to propose that we borrow for all the subscriber equipment with the idea that if we are able to get grants or if departments are able to get grants, then we just wouldn't spend that money and we can give that money back. Otherwise, what would happen is if we don't get the grants, then the then either we or the subscribers would be forced to try to find the money from somewhere. I don't know exactly. I mean, unless we decided to do a separate borrowing that would cover subscriber equipment later, if we weren't successful in any of the grant opportunities. Supervisor Frank, do you know of any other uh, other ones for that? I don't. I guess I would encourage as as part of the. We have to go to the resolution part of this for the funding that if it's going to include the subscriber equipment, we include a phrase um, saying that if grant funding is approved, then that will go forward. Uh, we've run into that in the state a few times where as long as that's in the document, then the grant funding is ex can be accepted because it's identified that that's what that grant <coughs> funding would be for. The flip side of that is that if you don't get the grant, 
you still end up paying for it and coming up with your own your own resources. So, um, so I suggest anyone, is anyone of the opinion that we should ask our subscribers to pay something? Like we pay ninety, they pay ten. We pay fifty, they pay fifty. Or, you know, is there? Or are we are we committed to purchasing the equipment? So I will state my opinion on this again, and it has not been overly popular, but that's okay. Um, I all the agencies, all the subscribers, the fire EMS um, have budgets to purchase radios. Some of their budgets are zero, and I get that. Many of them have an annual amount that they put in for radio maintenance, radio repairs. They get a new vehicle, they're gonna put a new radio in it. So I think that that's an appropriate um, method if they're gonna be getting stuff anyway, that they should be picking up part of it. I also think that there's a responsibility um, for them to have some teeth in, in, this, in this part because they're using the system and it's important to them and it's important to the community. So I think there's a, a, a piece of that. I think the end question is who is responsible after they receive that equipment, who is responsible for it? If we give that to them, I believe there's the opinion that we are then responsible for it. And I don't think that should be the case. I think the end user should be responsible for their own equipment. And therefore, that's why I say they should have some teeth in it. Is it 10%? Is it 20%? If it's a if it's a thousand dollar radio and you're paying two hundred dollars for it or two hundred and fifty, oh my land, that's a deal. So um, I think they should have some teeth in. I just don't know. We haven't sorted out what that is yet. Mr. Stevenson or Cosgrove, sir, Bob. A little bit. Um, so two, that's two parts of that. I think they should have skin in the game for sure. I, I don't and I whatever that level is, we can figure out. But but I think we do want to make sure that when we um, when we do give give these radios or when we provide these radios, uh, that there is a clear understanding of who's responsible for what. And in my opinion, once we give that to them, that is their equipment. We've done it once, but that's it. It's their radio, their responsibility. If it needs to be fixed, replaced, whatever, that's, that's on them would be my opinion of that. The other thing I would ask, that you put in there is that the equipment will be specified by RFP and by vendor because you're going to find out really quick, like Coke and Pepsi, everybody has their right. prep. It's already come up a number of discussions. Is there more than one option? Is there going to be more than one option? It's just we will have it'll, a, it'll we'll have a come down dedicated to, list. It'll come down to two options for subscriber equipment. That should cover most people, right? Have you heard anyone with a third choice? Oh, yes. No. Uh huh. Good Lord. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah. All right. So, so we will need to, to, and maybe we should write that up now and, you know, start thinking about what we would for, for subscriber. So, does any, well, Super, Supervisor Severson, would you like to comment on what you think about your subscriber? should just probably be prepared in case there are some smaller departments that probably don't have that money to fully fund that. What do we think would be a reasonable percentage? I mean, what if it's just 10%? A thousand dollar radio, that's a hundred dollars, right? Doing that math right? We're just going to be buying one radio or will it be well, like each piece or whatever. Well, I think we're buying whatever they said they need, right? I mean, they, we asked them to give us a list of what equipment they would need, right? And we heard from most of them. Most most of of them. them. There and were a few that refused to respond and we can't address those. If they refuse those. to respond, then we don't provide them equipment, period. I mean, then they have to figure out. They want to use our radio system, right? I mean, I don't know what else to do with that. Is it just two that haven't responded? So is this a topic to bring up on that? I know we're going over the uh, review of the bids at that point. Uh, is that a point to bring this up so we can yeah, see what these actually, numbers are? Yeah, when we actually know right. the subscriber, because he's, he's guessing it's going to be over a million dollars okay. for subscriber equipment. Now, but I think subscriber also includes all, all of our needs, and we're yes. a big chunk of it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not like we're going to get rid of a million dollars. We're going to get rid of half. Yeah, so we'll find out and we'll know more about, about that after he's had a chance to go through the, the proposals that have come in. All right, and to to speak to the uh, the needs here, 
in the last two years how many new radios have been purchased that won't need to be replaced because they'll integrate already. That's, we don't know. I think that's a big yeah, part of the That's just it. I have six mobile radios that are by phase one. Phase two, that are six or eight that some of them were, were bought before I was doing that, but that uh, portables or handhelds that are are capable as well. So we have we have a fair amount, and even even some of our older units are are phase one compatible. So you know we we need new radios. Don't get me wrong, but some of the stuff we have could do it. And we don't know what the uh, fire departments, EMS agencies, in the last year or two have purchased either. So. Part of this is going to need to be, we need your inventory, we need the dates, we need the specifications, so we can go through and say, we're not replacing a one-year-old radio. Yep, right. Right, so. Okay. Um, the other question that I have is, um, Administrator Langrick, are you still on? I mean, I see him. Go ahead, Madam Chair. Uh, so my question for you is, um, the ARPA funds that we have that are still that we in finance had designated for particular categories that are unspent. Can you give me a ballpark of, other than the money that you wanted to leave in contingency, what other funds are left in that ARPA? If you can hold one minute, I can pull that up. Okay, so, so while you're doing that, I'll just talk. Um, so <laughs> I was thinking that we have, um, I think close to a million dollars in ARPA funds that that finance had kind of broken up into categories of different public safety or public health and all these other things, but we haven't actually designated or spent those funds on anything yet. And in an, in an attempt to not have to borrow the full amount that I think we will be having to borrow, which is at least seven million, if not eight or nine or ten, depending on. What, what comes back. I'm wondering if we could shave off a million by using the ARPA funds. I mean, this is, to me, my, my thinking is that I would like to see the ARPA funds have a direct impact on our, on an economic impact on our citizens. And by not having to borrow a million less, that's that much less of a tax burden that we're gonna be passing on to our taxpayers, was my thinking. Um, not that the other things we designated for aren't important and probably would also be very helpful. It was just something that since those funds have not been spent and no one's really come up with, as far as I know, which Administrator Langer can correct me, no one has come up with actual ways to spend the money on those designated, in those designated categories, that we should at least have a conversation about potentially earmarking some or most of those funds for this instead of borrowing the entire amount. So that, that was just a I know what your thoughts are on that. Any, I think it's a great idea. What's the process to do that? Where do we start? Um, well, I think we'd have to go to finance. I mean, finance is who has, has allocated that money to certain pots. So we would start there, obviously. But I didn't want to bring it to them without knowing if that's something that we as a committee want to pursue. Supervisor Turk, do you have any thoughts on that? You're on finance with me. I, I'm i kind of of two minds with this. I, I do agree with your premise that it would be good to minimize the impact of borrowing, but I know there are other general thoughts that have been expressed for utilizing this money too, and obviously we it's unfortunate that we're find ourselves in a position where, you know, it sounds like you have a lot of money if you have approximately a million dollars, but it disappears really quickly. Uh, and, and for all kinds of different worthy causes, whether it's, you know, broadband infrastructure or this project or whatever else you might be talking about. Um, and I, while I, I feel that, you know, minimizing that borrowing impact is a worthy goal, even if we do reduce it by a million, does that make that big a difference to justify not having that money available for other things that could also make a difference and might not be able to be funded as easily through a borrowing mechanism? 
Right. Yeah, I agree with all of that. Um, and I, I'm not saying I have the answer, but those are the thoughts that, that run around when we start thinking about this stuff. Right. Oh, there. Thank you, Barb. That's very helpful. That's not me. Huh? It's Clinton. Oh, thanks, Clinton. <laughs> Slow it up a little. So, um, Administrator Langerk, if you could also let me know, the last time I asked you if there had been any proposals for anything in those categories above, um, you had said that no, you, that you thought people were thinking on it and talking about it, but no one had come forward with any sort of formal ideas on how to accomplish each of the, you know, spend the money in those categories to accomplish those goals. We've, we have responses back and I can kind of walk you through this. So um, the allocations here that you see in this first column are what uh, the decisions we made through finance and personnel uh, probably already over a half of a year ago in allocating and cutting up the pie into the different um, into the different purposes that were specified out through the, the actual act. Uh, so we put 10% towards public health response. We put 10% towards uh, the subject of negative economic impacts. And we specified that towards child care and education, um, which we did the grants for. We have premium pay for essential workers, which we've used some of that. Uh, water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure, and then the other part we left, uh, this was at 10%, 10%, 10%, and this was at 20%, and then leaving 50% of it of what is considered lost revenues, which gives us uh, pretty much maximum discretion on using it, with the exception that you can't use it for the purposes of uh, lowering existing uh, um, tax levy, and you can't use it for specific contributions into a pension fund or the two limitations. So currently out of this, we've received um, half of it in hand that we have in our coffers. We're expecting, expecting the second half, which should be coming in here, I believe in May. I have to double check when the second installment comes. Um, and so then currently we've already now spent 10% of it. We have granted out uh, through our grant programs for child care. Um, we've did a premium pay for essential workers. And we have quite a few other projects already earmarked uh, out of the 670,000. Uh, we've taken action to sign an agreement to do broadband surveying. Um, we are kind of on the queue and on the line for a drainage project at the uh, airport, as well as what's going to the uh, county board floor on Tuesday is $590,000 to partner with Laval Telephone uh, for broadband expansion of the $670,000, which uh, takes us over that 20%. And then we would be looking to uh, impact one of the other pieces of the pie on the table. Response back from Tracy kind of in, in regards to public health is they're looking to use that to subsidize operations through public health for the next couple of years. Uh, in the queue right now for our lost revenues, I'm tracking about $353 dollars of already earmarked but not expended and these are most i think all of these are established by resolution to queue this in there which leaves roughly about 1.3 million dollars now that can be used for a project like this but i um you know i really really think the county is going to be better suited uh, as we approach our our financial planning for the next few years, we know that we're approaching next year's operational gap already at a million dollars. And my goals with trying to preserve some of that for operations is it's going to allow us to uh, implement more of an incremental type of adjustments, as you will, as we figure out how to operationally fund. Um, so that the money could be used to reduce further debt service impact from borrowing, um, but it, it's very, challenging and uh, it doesn't uh, using a, a debt service note system for operations is not looked upon favorably um, we're using it for debt service for uh, for um, uh, for capital improvements like this impacts that other bucket so it is a decision for you folks and for the county board um, as the person that's trying to uh, tasked with trying to continue operations or to try to give uh, operations that might be um, might be going out on their own as much advanced time as we possibly can to allow them to continue to deliver services to the community. That's what I visualize the use of what we have remaining of pro approximately 1.3. Madam Chair. Can you just briefly, how many of uh, the proposal for the broadband, how many Households would get broadband out of that, or is this just putting in some kind of backbone? 
Um, stand by. I can pull that one up one second. I mean, I would argue the radio tower is also infrastructure. Badly, badly, desperately needed infrastructure. Go ahead, sir. I guess the other question I would have about the broadband is, is I know they're running it down roadways, but are we talking, are they actually going to house with that or is that That's just. I just asked how many households would get. Okay. All right. Actually get internet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, not, and I, not just running it down. A highway. Not just running it down the road. Yeah. yeah. Well, which is also important, not to diminish no, the is, importance but... of, of getting those backbones in, but I'd be curious to know how many households will actually get broadband out of it, or businesses, for that matter. That's important as well for anybody. All right. And I guess the other question with the uh, broadband infrastructure, I don't, I, because I haven't, we haven't seen the uh, responses yet, are any of the responses using um, fiber to come back to dispatch, or is it all microwave? And if they're using fiber to come back to dispatch, that is a path that could be used if it's close to tower sites, blah, 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 blah. So I, I don't, I'm kind of not sure. Right. And so that, that's a good topic is that broadband expansion might be very useful to this, to the radio project, depending upon what that end result is. But the, but the locations that they're going aren't the uh, dead zone that we're having. Okay, thank you. And do we know where all the new towers, or do you know where the tower sites are going to be? So that's the other, we don't, yeah, I think we're, we're open to some questions. I was just like looking to point. see if the, um, the broadband thing is in our Tuesday. Sorry. Are we getting fiber run to most of our tower, or to have any of that going in there? Can we at least get it going to some towers? Could this money be used for that instead? Who You're gonna have maybe to like, work that in your resolution. Like maybe the Richland Tower could have something from there to come down. Do we have anything like that right now? We have a dry loop. This is on copper. Would that would that you would that be beneficial if we had something like that? There, I think any fiber connectivity to our tower sites is going to be beneficial. Mm -hmm. So yeah. should you think maybe the Richland Tower up here, Tower Hill? But they're not coming into Richland Center, Carrie. If you look at this map, they're above. They're not coming into center with this. None of the fiber is coming in center. They're not going to make it to bunker. Nope. They're not in. This is not the anticipated bunker location. Fiber. What? Bunker already has fiber. Okay. So, Clinton, can you? I didn't see in here. What is Laval putting up money to, or is the county putting the whole thing? It's a 10% match. So we're putting in 590,000. Oh, I'm sorry, we're, that's a, we're sharing a 10% match. Uh, the so they overall- have, They're putting some and we're putting- 138 they're putting in, we're putting in 590. Yeah. <laughs> This is contingent upon them getting the grant too, right, Clint? Correct. It still has to be obtained through the state, but it is a fiber to home broadband project. Home to home. It, that, does anyone see anywhere in here where it says how many homes will be? Because that's a big part of when they get the grant. Part of the grant. I, it says location. that paragraph right there. It says four hundred and sixty. That's that's a lot. locations. I'm not sure. I I know. I think. Um, Josh Lean actually spoke specifically of it in the meeting, but I'd have to go back and reference the video or the minutes to see if we captured uh, captured how many estimated homes are there. I don't. I'm not sure if locations correlates directly with homes. I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't know, Mitty. Do we even want to mess with this and propose anything from the ARPA funds, or we just go ahead and borrow the whole shebang? So um, the question, I, I think I heard you say, uh, Administrator Langwick, that the funding cannot be used to offset um, tax base. Is there something about that? Uh, my understanding is that you can't, we couldn't, we couldn't reduce our, like our operational levy and augment it with ARPA funds. Operational, okay, all right. 
So we're fine as far for borrowing purposes. We're fine. Yeah. We'd be offsetting borrowed month funds. I think that's a, that's existing as well. I mean, I would just see it as you're doing a project and you would be funding it um, partially with ARPA funds, which you have in hand, and partially with a borrowing. If right. it was, you wouldn't really be reducing any type of a borrowing, you, or I mean, an existing borrowing. Existing, right. I don't know. I mean, there's no good answer. There's no right answer. I don't want to go forward to finance and propose this, though, if, if we're not prepared to. When does this, the broadband, does that have, has that been approved by the county board? I don't, no, that's coming on that's Tuesday. That's coming on Tuesday. We'd have to fight on Tuesday. We don't want this. We would have to say that, right. we, don't, that we don't like it. We and, don't want it. And, and, it may, and everyone else may disagree. Right. My concern is what, kind of what Carrie spoke to is if there's an opportunity for fiber to get to some of the tower sites, which we don't know where they might be yet. I don't want to, I want to make sure that that gets built into the project. So I'm concerned about this fiber project and we don't exactly know where our tower sites are going to go. Uh, I'm, I don't know how bad it would be if we pushed, tried to push this back a month so we could see what the tower I project is. grant like. deadlines that they're doing the right there. Grant yeah, the, the grant deadlines are actually, I believe, March 17th. So we yeah, have a two-day turnaround. However, well, I, will, yeah. will Laval telephone be at the meeting on Tuesday that we could ask him if they would be like a handshake agreement, willing to work with us on potentially bringing fiber to the tower? The uh, my goal. Sorry, go ahead, Glenn. I was going to say my goal is to work with MIS following this meeting to identify potential, uh, you know, the right language and the potential spots and reach out to Josh to see if we could do that. Potentially come forward to Tuesday's meeting with a appropriate um, okay. appropriate amendment language to a to the resolution to try to incorporate that. Again, if it's still if it's agreeable to to Laval as well, though. Well, it certainly would be in their best interest to at least entertain the idea, considering we need to, uh, we have to vote for this to pass. So, yeah, I I, I agree because uh, I think that's a that would be a solid piece of this background of this backbone for the radio system to to get that put together. Sounds like the conversations are already happening. So, yeah. uh, uh, Barb and I had discussed earlier in the week that we we don't know where tower sites are going to right. land. So, you know, we Do may we need know? we may need fiber access to those. We should know after their proposal, right? Like Mike might know yeah. right now. Yeah. We're working it's on it. Stuff that I don't understand. I can't even try to read it. Mike probably does. Well, and and proposed tower sites are great, but that still means you have to get permission on properties or right. is it county it's property, is it local property, is it private? There's so many other pieces that you know, yes, we'd like it here, but we're going to have to go four miles over to because that's the only site we can get. So, yeah, that's the timing is good, though, because their grant, this would be monies for 2023, right? So the fiber grant. I believe. Yeah, so then they would be getting their grants about the time where we're starting or in the middle. We would at least by then know where the tower sites are. And, I don't know. Well, do we want to? Uh, what do we want to propose? Nothing that we just say we're going to borrow the whole thing. Um, I mean, I do have a, a note here that we could potentially ask for a 10 percent commitment from the subscribers on their equipment. That's something we've officially. I mean, we don't have to decide right this minute because we're not actually right. doing the borrowing yet. But and I'd like to see what the proposals are on, uh, on the. Uh, Twenty uh, first to see what the numbers actually are. I think then we can make a better determination what that percentage is. And what do we want to leave the ARPA funds alone? Of course, last time I talked to it, there wasn't all of none of that money was was allocated. But then it's well, maybe after I said, well, maybe we should spend it on. And people started coming up with, which is fine. It's, people came up with projects then. Uh, and I guess I would say that if if the fiber connections are going to be possibly helpful into this, then we are kind of using some of the ARPA funds right. towards this. Correct. So at that point, I would I would lean away from tapping all of, all of that towards this project if we're already integrating some of it. So. 
can we use some of these ARPA funds to go to whoever provides internet for the city here? To some of that money to get fiber from this tower up here down to here? I'm sorry, say that again? Can we designate some of that ARPA money or ask for some of that ARPA money to whoever provides internet service for here, for this building to get from here up to that tower? Because that tower will be used no matter what, right? Assuming? Is that the tower Probably. hill? Probably. It's called Tower Hill, right? Yeah. I think that there are. If you're going to use ARPA money, you would be better spent connecting all your county buildings via fiber and just being done with it there. Well, Pine Valley, we don't have it. No, there's no fiber out to Pine. There is fiber. We're leasing it at $1,500 a month. Yeah. If you're going to spend your ARPA funds for fiber, let's put the infrastructure in so the county owns it and quits leasing it at that high cost a month. Places we lease to or just that Pine Valley that we lease? We lease to all the county buildings every month. At $1,500 per building? No, but that's what it is for there. It's different costs for each building. So if you're going to use ARPA funds for IT needs, that would be my strongest suggestion. That's what I think. That's different than that's different than, than what I'm told. So 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 I think we'll we'll have this conversation on Tuesday with Laval Telephone, assuming that they will show at least. I mean, I think he was the last time we brought up something about running fiber to towers. I think he actually the last time Laval we actually yeah. asked them, and he said he said yeah that we would definitely do. Anybody they say yes all. I know. I know never do it so we until we get that in right so we should well we could we could amend the resolution to include that language that says wherever is possible you know whenever wherever possible they will run fiber to our towers once the locations are known well there's it's better than a handshake it is, yeah right yeah okay so we'll just let that Okay. Um, mapping radio system and spot updates. So we did spot updates already. We beat the radio to death. <laughs> yeah, just just you know to touch on uh, the radio system just once more. We, we've had some significant issues in the last few weeks with, with the radio system, and I know you always want me to bring that. To your I do, attention. and actually, I think we should talk about them because this is recorded so people could watch it as well. Yeah. And so I, I think it's worth taking five minutes or so and describing what's been going on in the so last I, week. I would say it started probably almost four weeks ago now, Barb. I, um, members of Casanova Fire Department and EMS were reaching out to me saying that paging, which was already not great up there, was bad, as in they would. They would get tones, but they wouldn't get voice, or they wouldn't even get tones to trip their radio or trip their pagers. Um, so we started. I started conversations with Baycom, um, and got Baycom out here. They started. They first did a, a look at the tower site. They couldn't find anything wrong at the tower site. Um, he went back. The weekend went. We did some test pages that worked. He went back to lacrosse. The weekend hit and. Things went downhill from there. Um, so we had a number of failures that weekend. Jason, I think, put considerable about a considerable amount of time uh, working for us and working with vendors trying to get things going that weekend. So can I just back you up? When you mean things go wrong, what does that mean? That they were not getting any pages? We had, we had no communication with so, Casanova. So how, if there was an ambulance call, how how were we getting a hold of? Cell phone and I am responding. So I am responding. I am responding trips when dispatch assigns a unit to a CAD or to a to a call. to a call, um, and so what happens then is all the information that they have typed into their talk call taker screen then gets transmitted to um, the EMS fire via cell phone. Uh, they have cell service up there. Depends on where they're at. Because uh, I mean, I know in my house you wouldn't it's, be getting stuff; wouldn't do any good. You it's better. It's better than it has been up there. You have Wi Fi though, or exactly. It'll work. Yep, because it's the 911. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so even if, if you I don't have a cell signal, signal, you'll still get if, if you're, you're on the internet. Mm -hmm. 
So, so that weekend I put is out the a internet up there. Isn't that what we're doing with the internet right now? Yeah. There's no internet up there. <laughs> so that weekend I put out a directive to dispatch that, regardless of whether or not they get a response from CAS, that they assign a Casanova unit to a call. That way, at the very least, it trips that I am responding and they get information on their cell phones. Um, does, and does that work reliably? Right now, Jason added another feature to that so that we're capturing their pages off of our dispatch and I am responding and sending a copy of their pages to the cell phone and they're coming and yesterday we got clarification from CAS director even that those pages are crystal clear on I am responding. So they are indeed getting a copy of the page but not through their pagers. That, they're getting, how fast can that happen? Does that take it longer? is literally seconds as long as dispatch attaches the unit. Well, oh, they have to specifically say what unit to send it to. Yep, I think if they if they send it if they if they if they assign it to a fire unit, it'll go out to all the firefighters. If they assign it to the EMS unit, it'll go out go out to all their EMTs. So, yeah, it, okay. it's 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 an extra step, but it's working. Yeah, for now. So it, for now. As as a user of this, the one that receives is, I can tell you that once the pager goes off, it's. They can start talking and they may just be done with talking or they're in the middle of talking when this will alert and say that I have a voice audio. And I'll play Chief's page here. Yeah. And that's how clear they're getting in over their cell phones. But if you do it over their over their pagers. That's those are the tones. Yeah. So, okay. So keep going. Sorry, that's only the beginning. <laughs> that was that. That's only the first weekend. Um, so then we brought we brought the maintenance vendor back out uh, early that next week. Um, by that point, Jason, another vendor, had pinpointed to some equipment here on site at the courthouse. Um, so we brought them in, and I I think he ended up coming twice that week. Uh, to re not only to a look at the equipment, but then come back with replacement equipment for it. Um, I think we had things going. It seemed like we had things going that week, and then our dispatch console started crashing, and that that triggered a long series of uh, where dispatch would just randomly stop being able to communicate out through the console. They know when that's happening. Like, do they realize that it's not well, happening? Or usually, what happens is is uh, a county deputy or a city officer calls and on the cell phone and says, "Hey, I'm trying to get a hold of you, and nobody's answering." And they think they're answering, but they they don't even know. They don't they know. Don't, they, they don't know they need to answer. Well, they hadn't even heard. Yeah. That. So really um, we've learned through that now. To everybody's kind of getting a crash course and and more familiarity and. The backup radio that's in there, which runs on its own antenna, it's like a mobile unit from a car that runs on its own antenna, but it's enough to trip the radio system and talk out. So, and that we can also page off of that as well. So, if the council goes down, but you're you're doing, you're, you're making your job ten times harder because now instead of having a screen where you can select all the different channels just one by one and talk, now you're moving over to a radio, yeah. turning yeah. dials. Yeah, and all only, of this takes time. And if you don't know what you're doing, yeah. you have to probably look at some sort of cheat sheet. Right. Under and you're also transmitting from an antenna here, on top of this building, not from Tower oh, Hill, no. which has height and range. So you're you're limiting distance and range. And only one dispatcher can talk on the phone or on the radio at a time. At a time, which if you have an incident going on, which happened while the radios were down, just they came back up, and five minutes later we had a shooting incident in the county. And so you can only talk one person on the radio at a time. If you have a car crash in Richland Center and in Lone Rock at the same time, that's not that's not right. doable. So right now we're we figured out ways to make it work, but they're all well yeah, not yeah, way not, less not than ideal. Ways, yeah, but, way less than ideal. Yeah. Um, and, and did we get it back up and running to normal levels? I'll let Barb speak okay. as to what had to happen with that. I know there's some power supply issues. They replaced the power supply. They reran antenna wires. They repunched down other wires. I mean, it has been Jason's full-time job for the last two weeks. 
He has not been able to do anything but this, which is fine. We're happy to support it, but that comes at a cost to other departments right. and other services. So we're struggling immensely with that. Right now it is running and we don't talk anymore. Okay. Well, I mean, we all know how important that this is desperately needed, but God is going to be convincing. Making sure everyone else understands the severity of the situation we're in and how we're going to keep this thing cobbled together for the next 18 months. It's going to be, be challenging. It'll be a brain. There was one thing that we could do right now as a committee or county. What do you see would be try to mitigate? Yeah. I, I think the dispatch consoles, um, as soon as we can get them replaced, will be a big help because a lot of a lot of the problems in the last last few weeks have it's come down to the dispatch consoles. Um, we're still having trouble on and off with bunker. But the main, the main, uh, I'd say bulk of the problem, and Barb can correct me if I'm, but I think it's been the consoles. It's between the consoles and then the communication loop downstairs to those old cards, which yes, are part of the console, but it also steps into the next, transitioning it out to where it goes to the Penn's house and out to the hill. So it's all so interlinked that it's. It's hard to say. It's just the council. It's it's everything is just ready to go. Is my memory correct though, in that the dispatch councils won't get replaced until sort of later in the process, like after the towers are done? Nope, we're going to do that right away. You can do them right away. So they'll be compatible with our analog system while we're getting our digital system, if that's the route we go. I mean, that's okay. A couple of years ago, did we get a council from Lacrosse County? Yeah, it was all these councils from yeah. 2016. A couple of years ago, it's 2016. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just asked that question. That's the only reason I know. And they were end of life at that time. Yeah. It was four year plan to replace them. Well, there aren't any other ones out there we can borrow until we can. No. I mean that was a that was a huge undertaking integrating these ones into our system. And yeah. Were there do you know if there are councils that they just got you know, because they just upgraded their entire dispatch center? Mm -hmm. Their system didn't there, happen to be the same as these we could at least know parts from. There, I actually do know about that because I have had a conversation with Mike about those. They are not the same brand that we have. They're a different brand. Would they be available to us? It's a possibility, but that would be teaching our dispatchers to use another console for the intern. Oh, now it's better than being DOA. Right. But I was just thinking if they were the same as the yeah, lacrosse, not. At least we could use them for parts. So nope, they're by ourselves brand. a little time. They're Paris or something. I don't remember what he told me. They're a different brand though okay. than what we have. All right. Well, it's all been some positive vibes to our dispatch console to uh all right um anything else on radio system dire straits yeah we need yeah. to we need to do we need to do this um okay item number 16 future agenda items have anything that um i will say in from the strategic planning committee we did put uh, a blurb in there that this committee would pursue um, an investigation into options for what we need in the jail, whether it be a new facility or I'm assuming that's where, the, but to have an open mind, we should look at whether we could somehow remodel or improve or our current jail um, or whatever, uh, whatever other options out there um, in the next three years. So. We're supposed to present a report to the county board with our recommendations within three years. So I'll probably start bringing those conversations to, to this committee uh, this summer. That's all I got. Anyone else? All right, with that brings us to 17, adjournment. Second.
Motion by Frank, second by Peterson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.